saying what the nightmare will be if this goes through. Number one, there's no age restriction. It could be your newborn baby, it could be your grandparents, it could be you who just gave birth. There are no restrictions to remove. What's going on guys? We are back with another video reacting to crazy, creepy, mysterious, and almost out of this world videos. We got some great videos today and I can't wait for us to get into them, so let's go. Egypt, they're like super sacred. You know, and the hieroglyphics, one of them is a beetle. And the importance is not why we think it is. That beetle symbol is really important because it might solve the creation of the pyramids. Why? How? This is where it gets wild. Yeah. In Russia, there's a scientist. He studies bugs. And one of the bugs he was studying was a beetle that you could find out in Egypt and out in like Africa. He was looking at it one day. He was examining the wings. He noticed when the beetles fly, it's almost as if like they hover. Mm -hmm. When he was examining it, the wing touched on top of the other wing and it fell off like right away, almost like a magnet would. Whoa. It would it would go on top and then boom, you know what I mean? Like yeah. boom, yeah, yeah. And come off. What he did, he collected a whole bunch of these beetles and he created with the wings a board. He was able to make almost like a hovering surface. What? So Dubai is experiencing some of the worst flooding that he has ever experienced ever. Leaving a large part of Dubai underwater. This is inside of the airport. People is literally walking in water in a whole pool. Some parts are so bad that it's literally turning cars into submarines. As y'all can see right here, this car has went all the way underwater. Every day we wake up, we seeing stranger and stranger things to happen. Like I said, a large portion of Dubai is underwater. Because they got a whole year's worth of water in one storm. Which is very much not normal, if you ask me. And some people are even saying this is the cause of the cloud seeding project that they got going on. But the UAE government denies that cloud seeding took place before the Dubai floods. But I'm curious though, what's y'all thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Like and follow for more wisdom and stay tuned. We definitely live in this strange, strange times. The government has so much power that once they say they didn't do something, all we can do is believe them, right? That's really the only choice we got. Like, what else are we going to do? That flood was so crazy, and I just want to know how do they clean this type of stuff up. I need the people that believe everything that the government says or everything that they hear on the news. I need y'all to do a little bit more research. You can't just take everybody's word for it, you guys. That's when we become naive, manipulated, and just plain stupid. That's really what makes people stupid. It's as simple as that. It's just getting a little too lazy and a little too trusting. And they're going to trick you guys right into some bullshit. Major city in north america was destroyed by fire between 1850 and the early 1900s every city in america was torched so we don't really know what was here anymore they left a few museums or whatever you want to call them um yeah no look at the great look whoever's watching look at your big city wherever you are atlanta new york chicago doesn't matter where type in the great fire of and then type in your city you're going to see that at some point between 1850 and 19 called 1930 your city was completely devoured. That was in this country. What? Oh, wait a minute. We got to look into that. Wherever, whatever, whatever city y'all from, let's go ahead and Google that and see what they say. I feel like that got to be fake. That has to be fake. But at the end of the day, anything goes nowadays. Oh, yeah, we need that. Hold on, you guys. So have we figured out why that blue, particularly on the roofs of the houses, keeps it safe? What is it? Why is it that blue? And as you know, guys, in Hawaii and I think in, Ve in Venezuela and other countries, the houses that w had blue roofs as well as blue cars and anything pretty much blue. So those things were safe from like exploding and catching on fire. So I'm trying to figure out what is it. And I still don't know. I don't know if you guys heard anything about it. <laughs> All right, y'all, I got to address the eclipse just one more time. 
as I'm doom scrolling through TikTok shorts and reels, I keep coming across more and more videos about the eclipse from more sightings of entities to a second moon in the picture. What's happening tonight, folks? If you guys could, do me a solid. Follow, like, subscribe, and share this post. Especially follow and subscribe. It really helps my channel in the long run. Only 30% of my viewers are actually subscribed who are watching me. So if you're watching my videos regularly and you like them, please take the time and subscribe and follow. Thanks. Now this one took me back. A second moon. Now, I'm going to show you a quick clip here of a lady who made a bold claim on TikTok that went uber viral. Check it out. See throughout the video that her claim is that the sun and the moon aren't in alignment, that they're actually in Pisces, which means they're essentially right next to each other. Hear what she has to say. People are talking about the eclipse, but they're not talking about this. The sun and the moon are not aligned on April 8th. They are in Pisces. Right now, if you go to your Skyview app and you push forward to April 8th, plug it in. Now, real quick, before she continues, I want to tell you that shortly thereafter, people were catching on to this alleged situation. They claim that the app she's talking about switched, got it to where the sun and the moon are aligned based on what you punch in. So don't go try and do it. It's not going to work. It will show you that the sun and the moon are in Pisces. They are not aligned. They are sitting beside each other, but they are not aligned. How is that possible? Because the sun and the moon have been out of place since back in September 2023. I've been doing these videos telling you that the sun is not where it should be. People are telling me it's the calendar. The calendar's off. Don't worry about it. It's where the sun is in the sky that's different. It's not where it should be. This eclipse is showing you that I am telling you the truth. Because if we see an eclipse on April 8th, how is that possible? If the sun and the moon are in Pisces, it can't be an Aries eclipse, right? If the sun is in Pisces. And if the sun and the moon are not aligned, they have to be aligned in order for you to see an eclipse, correct? So I don't have to be an astrophysicist to understand this, and neither do you. I'm trying to get this out to as many people as I can. Please share this because, I mean, this is just a no-brainer. These, these heavenly bodies are changing. They are not where they should be. And they damn sure will not show you an eclipse in the sky if they are not aligned. So, that being said, I've got to show you a couple videos. If you look closely, it looks as though in certain videos seen, the moon seems to be in the picture, but not in front of the sun. So, is this correct or is it not? I'm not sure. We can only speculate at the end of the day. There's really no cold hard proof that it is the moon. Could be a reflection, could be a glare, but I will say it does look generally close to what the moon looks like. And a lot of people were saying that the eclipse itself, when the moon moves in front of the sun, in general, you're supposed to be able to see the face of the moon, that it's not supposed to be completely pitch black. And another thing I found very intriguing, I saw one video where, and it might have been doctored up, I'm not 100% on this, but it looked as though the moon went by the sun, the eclipse took place, and then as it was going and fading out, it actually looked like it almost tucked behind the sun. Now, as I said, that could be doctored up because there was at least two videos that i seen doctored up with the moon on the complete opposite side of the sky. You could tell they edited it and glitched out the scene. I hate when people do that because it discredits reality, but those were the fake ones. The ones that I believe have some validity are the ones with the moon next to the sun. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you those right now. Check them out. Hey, what the f hey, It was just too, hey, it was just too like, it's two figures in the air. It's two figures in the air. It's three. Hey, it's like four on, bro. I'm not going to lie. They look pretty legit. And even in the video of the entity flying across the moon, 
I noticed this sliver of something reflecting off the sun. Now to me, that is baffling. Could it be Nibiru or is it the moon? What do you guys think? Now I'd like to take the time to mention the video I posted a while back of an alleged mason showing us the status of our realm or our existence. And I noticed on other platforms people were talking about this black sun. That the moon is a reflection of our landscape and this black sun from under the earth is causing the reflection. I'll show you a quick clip of that right here. First of all, I keep thinking that he's going to end this video, but he keeps coming through with all these receipts. Like, I really appreciate the length of this video, but I swear to God, I keep thinking it's going to end. You can see how he separates the oblate spheroid with a disc that has a hole in the center. Then, below, he draws a circle and immediately paints it completely black. From this black circle rays come out and three rays pass through the hole in the center. See the black sun. He draws reliefs on the edge of the hole and writes North Pole. And above this hole inside what would be the celestial vault, he draws a star, the polar star or Polaris. Okay, okay. He marks two points and connects them in a circle and writes Equator. Mm. He draws two lines that go down from the polar star to the two points. The lines form a triangle. I've seen this video a couple of, of times sun, before. And then throughout my you guys really have to break that video down a little bit and really pause it and watch it again because it has a lot of information in that. And I'm talking about in regards to uh, the mason that exposed how the world is flat and broke it down to really show us what it looks like. Process of trying to figure this out, I can't help but recall the Book of Enoch, chapter 72. It's called The Courses of the Heavenly Luminaries. Now. This book is not necessarily fact, but I think it would be ignorant not to at least give it the time of day. For those of you that haven't read it, please take the time to give it a read. It's very intriguing. So Enoch, in the book of the Heavenly Luminaries, basically says that the sun and the moon travel through portals throughout the year, and this causes the seasons. There's six portals in the east, six in the west. They rise in the east and set in the west portal. They're going through the same portal on each side. The first one they rise in, they set in the first one. And the moon follows course slightly behind. It's very confusing. I actually had to draw out a map to actually understand what he was saying. But it can be almost very enlightening at the same time. So my guess is if you look at it like that, then eventually they basically just cross paths or are going through the portal maybe at the exact same moment and that's why you get the eclipse I'm not exactly sure I'm not sure also that if the portal isn't what's causing the eclipse and that's why you see the Sun and the moon separate I don't know it's just theories just kind of speculating and kind of trying to figure it out myself the eclipse is a very interesting phenomena it's very peculiar and it's very in, it can be hard to grasp but someday soon I'm gonna do a video I decided because it's really in-depth enough to do a whole video on about Enoch and basically Uriel which is the alleged lead archangel and it, he takes Enoch and shows him all about the heavenly luminaries and it's a very cool account whether it's true or not, it's very intriguing, and it makes you think. So what do you guys think? Was that really the moon next to the sun? Let me know in the comments. But the fact that we were seeing the sun and the moon next to each other, and yet we had an eclipse, is very odd. And I'm not saying that it took place. I'm not saying that that's what's happened at all. But the videos were very, the videos were intriguing nonetheless. So what do y'all think? Was that the actual moon? If so... What could the eclipse have been caused by? Was it Nibiru? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video. You guys, that was the longest video of my life. But anyways, there was a lot of good information. I, I felt like we almost had like a whole history slash astrology lesson right there. He did come through with a lot of receipts, so that was good. Number one, shout out to the, the Sky app. I forgot what it's called, but I definitely have it on my phone. You guys should definitely have it on your phone as well. It's really cool to go in there and just see where everything is.
Number two, this is way out of pocket, but what if, you know how they stated that they were building a new moon and a new sun? What if they're at a the point where they can create their own eclipses? Or what if they're at a the point where they can block the sun out or the moon out at any time that they would like? That would be crazy because if they could do that, they could literally alter the times that we are in. Number three, I want you guys to let me know down below. Are you a flat earther or are you a globe earther? And why is it that some grandparents and great grandparents actually believe and confirm that in school they were taught that the earth was flat too. Nevertheless though, the eclipse was a super dope event and I'm glad we got to experience it. Looking very odd and she believes we've been catapulted in the darkness. Now I'm about to show you her video in a minute, but when I was watching the eclipse the other day, a thought kept coming in my head and I was like, something is in front of the sun. The eclipse looked completely different to me than did to anyone else's cell phone. So I was like, okay, yeah, that's pretty odd. Until I watched her video on this. I will also prove to you allegedly that the sun we're looking at now is not the same sun we used to look at decades ago. And by the way, have y'all noticed it's been catastrophically windy ever since that happened? Along with a dark gloom over my head for days in a row along with CERN's Peter Higgs passing away on April 8th. So really quick before we dive deep, this was me recording the eclipse, and I kept thinking something was in front of the sun, and you can see the lens flares showing what time the eclipse was at, like what part was being eclipsed. But all I saw was this super huge bright thing, when everyone else, most people on cell phones, caught it being eclipsed, depending on where they were. You can see from the lens flares, it was almost a total solar eclipse at this point. And the sky was still bright. All legend, in my opinion. And now let's go see what Colette was saying. Yo, this is my backyard, here's the sun, and here's that ominous glow globe that we always get when we do videos, which is literally just a reflection of the sun that floats around, but it's a reflection of the exact sun. Imagine my shock and surprise when I zoomed in on it and I found this. Yeah, those are some whole geometric patterns. That is the reflection of that sun. And Bible prophecies are unfolding right before our eyes. The sun is black as hot cloth, the moon is not given its light. We used to open the key to the bottomless pit, to open the portal. Apep is the enemy of the sun disk, and his mission, his job, is to, well, devour the sun. Here's one of the pictures I got of the sun in the sun glow. That is the sun's reflection. Okay. And that. And I discovered something even more eerie. Not only is its reflection got those geometric shapes in it, so does the sun. Look close. I tinked around with the contrast and the brightness. Now this is the sun you know if you're over 20 years old from a few decades ago. This was the sun we had. It was orange. It was not white. It was not LEDs. It was orange. This was recorded in 2000. Yeah. Is it possible the sun in the sky is not the real sun? I've showed y'all my recordings of the crescent powering the sun. And again, we had that crazy anomaly coming from Antarctica, allegedly, right? This this huge vortex of energy. This thing in the sky in China, like things are weird. And like I said, we've had nonstop windstorms for days ever since the 8th. And right now, we are being bombarded by UFO footage. Bombarded by it. Like there's something crazy that's allegedly about to happen. Allegedly speculation. And freaking meanwhile, the Pentagon has been suggesting that there's an alien mothership in the solar system that could be sending many probes to Earth. I'm telling y'all, it gets deep. But what on earth is the point of the mothership and the UFOs? This right here, it gets really deep. In a very, very, very old certain kind of Bible, it says that Jerusalem is the center of the world. Jerusalem. Like this, Rupus Nigra or Mount Zion being in the center of the earth. But who lives in the center? Or Black Rock. Of the earth. Maybe whoever built this world for us just a couple hundred years ago who were building tens of thousands of square foot buildings with no bathrooms and no kitchens? Like I said, it gets deep. Stay tuned for part two. Until then, tell me why there's paintings of people riding dinosaurs just a couple hundred years ago. And was it 1600 or J600? The reason there's so much happening right now and so much being uncovered is because you are in the Great Awakening because you are in the end of the lot of days. On part two, we'll get into my opinion on why we have a mothership in this solar system. And you're not going to like the answer.
the amount of information that is coming out right now is ridiculous. I feel like we're just like really getting bombarded with truth. But always use your discernment, of course, because there's a lot of manipulation with the media. You always got to be aware of what kind of information you are receiving. But to stay on topic, a few years back, I started noticing that the atmosphere just looked different. The sky looked different as well as the sun. And I was just thinking it was me. Like things maybe were brighter and more like juicier when we were little. Everything just was more like picture perfect and super saturated. I was like, something's off. Something's not right. Maybe my eyesight has changed since I got older. I don't know. Maybe I'm perceiving things different. Then... I started realizing watching older movies, I would catch moments where somebody's walking down the street or there's an event going on outside. And I was like, look, like that's the type of light that I'm talking about. They had that juicy yellow glow, that sun, that warmth, and I could see it on the TV screen. And I was like, this is how I remember it to be. So I was like, how can I be perceiving it through the television, but not outside in real life? And I was like, something isn't right. So now... Years later, we're getting this type of information where you, the sun was messed with or the moon was messed with and it's not the original ones. And so now, because I've already had perceived this information and tried to figure out what it was, now that the evidence is kind of coming about and more people are showing us that they feel the same way, I'm just like, wow, it's not just me. Something is really going on. So you guys tell me how you feel about that. Does it still look the same to you as always? Or has there been some type of shift that you've noticed? But most importantly, how would they be able to pull this off? All right, guys, listen, if you live in New York, run, run real fast. Like if you own a house, go ahead and sell it. If you own a condo, go ahead and sell it. If you just renting, go ahead and move. Leave New York ASAP. I'm trying to warn you. They're starting a the thing where they can just come in your home, pull you out your home, and put you in a concentration camp. And they call it quarantine. So I'm trying to tell you guys now, they're about to come for you. And it ain't nothing, it ain't nothing that nobody can do. You know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing that nobody can do. So I'm telling you now, this is my warning to you. Run. Run real fast. Pack your shh. And get out of New York now. Alright, guys, for more updates, make sure you like, subscribe, and follow. On that note, like he said, make sure that you like this video, you share, you subscribe, you comment down below, hit the notification bell. It would be a blessing if you guys went ahead and did that. But, anyways, to get back into it. A lot of stuff is going on. There's so many bridges collapsing, which is a little bit suspicious. Are they trying to keep people in? Are they trying to keep people out? And my answer to that, since there's always some type of chaos going on in the cities, I'm pretty sure they're just trying to keep people in. You guys really have to go look up dystopian communities or dystopian cities. That is what's coming up next for everybody throw you in one of those quarantine camps and nobody will ever dispute that because these people that are still asleep they are very much a yes man to the authorities this is definitely the scariest video i've ever made it's not just for new york city it's for the entire state of new york we are all gonna have to run and get the fuck out of here let me explain to what happened over the weekend rule 213 anybody remember what rule 213 was supposed to be or what it is now over a year ago, Governor Hochul tried to have something come in place called two, Rule 213, where the state can come remove you from your home and put you into quarantine. And I'm not talking about C-19. I'm talking about any disease, including Lyme disease, toxic shock syndrome, things that aren't even contagious, okay? This happened last March. It was approved to go through until a bunch of lawyers sued them for it. And the judge appealed it. They said, this is not going to go through. No thanks. Goodbye. Until this past September, when Governor Hochul appealed that decision, he followed up with the New York State Supreme Court Appellate Division, 4th Judicial Department. Both sides gave their arguments. Hochul's lawyers saying, oh, it's not going to be as bad as you think, while the other lawyers saying what the nightmare will be if this goes through. Number one, there's no age restriction. It could be your newborn baby. It could be your grandparents. It could be you who just gave birth. There are no restrictions to removing the person that needs to come out 
and go in quarantine. Could be in the middle of the night, middle of the day, while you're at work, doesn't matter. They take you, you have no right. There is no due process. There are no court hearings. There is also no time duration limit. You are there until they tell you you can leave. It is, you are not allowed to take a test to prove that you are not even sick. They don't care about test results. If they deem you to be a problem, they just take you out and put you into a quarantine. If you look up on Google, some websites will say, no, it's not a quarantine camp, it's something else. Well, really, uh, what the fuck would you call it? They announced over this weekend, the appeals court finally got back with the decision after months later, and they put it through. Rule 213 is now in place for the entire state of New York. Attorney Bobby Ann Cox is saying there is only one more place they can appeal this is the New York State Court of Appeal. That's our last chance. Frankly, I don't know how any judge could have voted that this rule is okay. Maybe they don't think it will happen to them or to their family members or to their friends, but there is no way that this is constitutional by any means. You guys, there's this one movie and I could not, I don't know if I can look it up. Um, I was trying to find it, but pretty much it's about like there is a facility where patients get treated. If you are going through some type of mental, you know, uh, situation, they wanted those people to stay there. So they would put something in the water to keep them sick. Attention and listen, because Max Azzarello left a hidden message about crypto before lighting himself on fire in the middle of Manhattan. Hey, want to learn the biggest secret in the world? In March 2023, sketchy billionaire Peter Thiel started a bank run. I did 1,500 hours of research, and I learned all their rotten secrets. The big one is the cryptocurrency is history's first planetary multi-trillion dollar Ponzi scheme. That's an economic doomsday device. And when that Ponzi goes insolvent, as all Ponzi's must, we'll get the worst economic collapse in world history. And every powerful person you can think of is in on it. Want to know why everything gets worse and more expensive? That's because we live in a secret kleptocracy. That's when the government gets taken over by con artists whose only job is to steal from the public. And I hope you know this is wonderful news. Because now that the public knows about the secret kleptocracy, they get to abolish their criminal government. Follow for more. Now listen to this, y'all. You know what's kind of creepy is that like he's talking to us the way that you would talk to kids in like a little preschool or a daycare. You know, and be like, all right, guys. And now we're going to go take a nap. Like, he's literally talking to the public like that. He really wants us to understand. Um, but back to the video we just watched. 213. I believe the movie that I was talking about is called A Cure for Wellness. It came out in uh, February 17th, 2017. So, you guys, go look that up. That possibly might be it. Or, but look at the trailer and see if you want to watch that. I definitely would. I think I'm going to rewatch it again. But that movie was crazy. Is it Sunday the 5th? Yes, messenger. I believe it is. I think you're about to give a big message. Two. It is the year of our Lord 1328. Oh, the date frightens you? You'll do the math and then you'll get the real date. But it is this year. Like I mentioned before, you guys, um, a lot of people go off of different calendars. In Ethiopia, I believe it's like 2014 or maybe... 15 or 16, because I'm not too sure when I looked this information up, if it was this year or last year. End of his life was super suspect because the person he was with. So we're going to talk about that in a minute. First, we're going to talk about this. This guy right here is someone who actually knows Ryan. He knows personal things about his life and much of the relationship. But I'm going to go ahead and connect the dots that he's saying, but trying to say subtly. And then we'll talk about the live. A lot of people have been asking me about Ryan. And I'm going to inform everybody about what's going what's really going on all right so quickly the last few years of ryan's life in a nutshell basically he was escalated in his career without having to do anything devious right eventually some people came to him and he found out what was actually going on behind the scenes the things he's been speaking about the things we're all aware of right when he found that out he went and got baptized and he got saved sometime between the salvation and now he turned to the dark side 
He made the covenant he was not supposed to make. He did the things he was not supposed to do. And he was taken to a location that he was speaking about. And he saw some terrible things. And after that happened, something snapped in Ryan's brain. I can relate. It was 13 years ago when I first saw what they did behind closed doors. And I didn't sleep for a week. Anyways, he got really mad and started calling him out. There's a whole bunch of controversy because before he even came out saying those things, people were saying, like, a video came out saying that he had died. So then he seemingly comes back from the grave, says all this crazy stuff, then all of a sudden is like, I'm not going to speak any more about it. Now, people say this video is AI because there's no tattoo on the hand. Now, remember, this could be mirrored, and I also feel like I saw, see a tattoo on this hand right here. Besides that, if it's AI... Why are all these major platforms and media outlets sharing it? That's even weirder. Why would they need AI to talk for him? Now, remember what I told you earlier. He had signed the covenant, the covenant with darkness. What happens when you break that covenant and expose it? They're coming after you and they're going to deal with you. And they may even make you mock Christ, the crown of thorns. And that brings me to this live. The whole time, this guy beside him was trying to keep his mouth from opening about certain topics besides boxing. The whole comment section were asking Ryan, what was he talking about? Can he prove it? All the stuff. And every single time, this guy would say, oh, there's no questions about boxing. And he would literally cut him off. And when the controller that was put in charge could not control anymore, he literally turned off the live. They don't know how things you've been through, bro. Keep like that, can't. All right, it looks like we're not getting oh, wait, any questions, wait, bro. Wait, wait, time trouble. No, oh, hey, no, we can out, we can out, we can out. Bro. Hey, we out, y'all. No, I'm not bro. in this live. Bro. How do we in the live? Bro, for real. Oh, we're out. Bro, we, we have proof. They don't want to give any questions. So my final thoughts are, is this Ryan? If so, what was the need for AI? And if so, what was the point of the video coming out saying that he had passed away? So yeah, this whole thing does not add up. What do y'all think? Let me know below. Top comment Wednesday, inspired by the King hoodie. Okay, so at one point, I used to be like pro Ryan because everything seemed legit. But as we know, he just said that he did everything just kind of for clout to get everybody going, to make everybody think he was going a little crazy or just being a little off. And now we know what he was doing because now we're taking a little rear view uh, trip back into the past watching this video, right? At this point, I don't know if he's just using these strategies to make himself some more money, but I kind of feel like they are using him and he may be, uh, you know, a plant to distract us because for a while there, he really had us going while there's a lot of stuff that was going on in the background. So it's unfortunate because like I said in the previous video, it's like the boy who cried wolf. And I feel like he is going to experience some stuff, but now we're not really going to believe him. He had his fight he made his money. The only thing that I liked that he did was that he betted on himself and made an extra like 12 million prank he was playing to make that money, to make him trend. If that was the game, if that was what he was pretending to do, that's, that's his business. But at the end of the day, we have to be aware because to us, it was a distraction. Both the sun and the moon rise in the east and set in the west. So what the hell entered the sun from the west and left in the east? Research the black sun. You already knew this was coming. You know I had to talk about this thing behind me. Literally the day after the eclipse, this massive anomaly shows up out from under Antarctica apparently. Y'all, this is crazy. It started out with just 28 foot or so waves. 13 to 28 feet coming from essentially Antarctica and as the day went on on the 9th they grew they grew and they grew and they began to cover more and more area check it out so you can see it starts off a certain anomaly then it begins to get wider 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 and boom it just disappears right by Cape Town South Africa now check this out this is a video that was posted on TikTok 23 hours ago from Cape Town, shortly after the anomaly went through. It is literally almost like a tsunami. It is blasting the shoreline. What's even more interesting is, even before the eclipse, the day before, stuff started picking up there. Whatever is causing this, and I know people are saying, oh, it's just swell waves, blah, blah, blah. Y'all, there's something going on. So after going over some things with my girlfriend and shooting some ideas back and forth, I think we've discovered where exactly this large burst of energy came from. 
Between 2016 and 2018, scientists in Antarctica discovered a particle emitting from under the Earth known as neutrinos. Neutrinos are the most abundant particle in the universe that were thought for a long time to have zero mass. But they recently discovered that in fact it does have slight mass, but it's so small they cannot assign an atomic mass to it. It's also the only subatomic particle to interact with one of the four fundamental interactions of nuclear physics, and that is the weak force. Long story short, that means it can pass through any mass unimpeded. For example, every day, trillions of neutrinos are emitted from the sun, and they pass through you, you don't even know it. Why is this important? Well, they can use these neutrinos to map planets, to map the core of the sun. They even believe that they can use it to communicate possibly faster than the speed of light. And they've also discovered that UFOs emit these same subatomic particles. So essentially, they can use them to track UFOs within our airspace. So back to the source of our possible energy burst. The way they track these neutrinos is by these modules called DOMS for digital optical modules. And they basically track these neutrinos when these neutrinos interact with the nuclei of ice. Their facility in the Amundsen Scott Research Center in Antarctica, they've buried 5,000 of these DOMS over 2,500 feet deep into the ice. What most don't know is those 5,000 DOMS are capable of producing 2,400 volts of electricity. They get this electricity from an undisclosed nuclear power deep within the Antarctic ice. They can do that because it was there and they discovered it before the Antarctic Treaty. Needless to say, when they kick this thing on, around 12 million volts of electricity is emitted from these DOMS at the Ice Cube Neutrino Research Facility. Let's just say when they first fired it up, it caused an earthquake in New Zealand. And that was an early on discovery. Who knows what the power this thing can produce even is. But that's, I believe, why you see the energy waves or the waves coming out from Antarctica. And then this goes back to what I believe the entity is. In the beginning of my video, what did I say? They can use said neutrinos to track UFO spacecraft. Now, whether this was just a byproduct of them firing it up, or whether or not they fired it up intentionally to zero in on said craft, and this is my theory, but I believe that anomaly, whether it was multiple crafts, one craft, I don't know, but they fired up that ice cube neutrino facility and detected with neutrinos that massive anomaly or that craft in the ocean or multiple crafts. Now, I don't believe that necessarily one craft would make such a massive anomaly, but it could give off energy or multiple crafts could get off, give off energy that would cover that span of area. Therefore, the waves and the interaction with the craft causes all of this that is taking place from the wind, the waves, the animals moving, the sea life swimming away, weather anomalies, period. Again, this is just a theory. Well, I tell you, my ADHD almost made me give out on that one. Guys, that was the last video. Thank you so much for joining me today. As always, thank you guys so much for everybody that has already joined the family. I appreciate you so much. Make sure you hit that like button below to support our channel so we can keep releasing these videos and spreading the truth, the wisdom, the knowledge. For anybody new here today, I want to say welcome to our family. You, all you got to do is subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell down below, and you will be notified every time a video is released. I really want to point out to you guys that yes, we can be prepped, we can be ready, but most of all, if you don't do any of that, make sure you stay prayed up. Make sure you stay protected physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, psychologically, in every single way. Put on your armor. Once you get into the community, sometimes it gets overwhelming because you feel like there's just too much stuff to do to keep up with this. But it's not really adding stuff, adding new stuff to your life. It's more so of decompressing from all the stuff that we have learned. So it's almost just like kind of sitting back and relearning and really re-educating yourself, taking it back, taking a seat and observing and seeing that, you know, you don't need to be eating those unhealthy items put that back on the shelf change your habits maybe start working out 
the natural things that we were originally meant to be doing. This is definitely a journey, but it's very much worth it once you get there. And there's so many people that will welcome you with open arms, just like our family here, but as well as in your community. There are a lot of us and we will guide you and we will show you the way and take you under our wings. Now, this journey is not easy, but it's very much worth it, like I mentioned before. Most importantly, stay true to yourself, stay rooted and grounded, and everything will start making sense and you can go from there. Like I always say, everything is everything. Be good and do right. And I will catch you guys on the next one.